After a big political night yesterday, we have a huge night for you right here on Fox News Channel. It's a powerful primetime lineup with a full hour dedicated to each of the four Republican candidates. It all starts in just two hours from now. At 7 p.m., John Kasich goes on the record as he makes his case to voters during a town hall with Greta Van Susteren. At 8, the spin stops at the O'Reilly Factor. At 9, Ted Cruz joins the Kelly File to answer questions from voters in North Carolina. At 10 p.m., Eastern GOP frontrunner Donald Trump, fresh off three victories yesterday, joins Sean Hannity. And at 11, Marco Rubio joins Megyn Kelly from his home state of Florida for a special second hour of the Kelly File. Joining us now from Chicago is Greta Van Susten with a preview of her on-the-record town hall with John Case of Greta, great, great evening on Fox News Channel tonight. You're kicking it off. What do you want to know from John Kasich first? You know, what I want to do, what I'm hoping to do for Governor Kasich is sort of reintroduce him to the voters because we really are down to the line. Next Tuesday is a very important time for him. He had a big night in Michigan. He came in third, but only by a hair. I would say that he tied for second place. And he seems to be the one person who might have a chance. If Donald Trump's ever going to be booted out of first place, it may be that it's Governor Kasich. And the American people don't know a whole lot about him because he hasn't got a whole lot of a, uh, interviews, not a lot of publicity. So I'm hoping to sort of reorient the viewers. They may Maybe interested in him, maybe not. I'm not telling him who to vote for, but you know, we're all talking about what if Donald Trump doesn't get 1,237 delegates? It's going to be a brokered convention, and that's where we may hear a lot more about Governor Kasich. And remember, Cleveland, where the RNC convention is, that's his home state. So uh, very exciting here. So I, I hope to uh, I hope to learn a lot. But I want to ask him a little bit about the news of the day too, Eric. All right, very, very good, good. Hold on, here's Dana. Well, I, um, you covered a lot of this, Greta, but I wanted to ask a couple of things. So last night. John Kasich in Michigan won late deciders um, by about 32 percent. People who decided in the last few days went for Kasich. Um, he also apparently um, has a very good absentee ballot operation. So in Ohio, you have a lot of snowbirds, people who leave the, <laughs> the state um, during the winter. And the Ohio GOP operation has been very good at tracking them down and getting those absentee ballots in. And I also think that he does very well in these town hall formats. but. In, in terms of connecting with voters, but you haven't seen him on television. So how will you break it up tonight in terms of you asking him questions and then people in the audience getting a chance to ask him? Well, first of all, Dan, let me tell you a little bit about the audience. There'll be a few Kasich supporters, but we have gone out and tried to find all the undecideds, even at this late date. And you talk about the absentee, but a lot of these people, you know, haven't voted. So they're still trying to make up their mind. And what I'm hoping to do tonight is, is sort of go back to many of the core issues. I mean, the problem is we've gotten to the point in, these, in this election where, frankly, it's, it's sort of hard to tell a lot of the candidates apart on some issues. So I'm, this will be his chance to try to distinguish himself and to try to sell himself to voters. I mean, the one thing we all know about immigration is Donald Trump wants to build the wall. The other three, we know they want to close the border, but it sometimes gets a little bit foggy what the difference is in. So this is sort of his chance to sort of sell himself on these particular issues uh, because he's got to win next Tuesday and he's got to win big next Tuesday. And I understand there's going to be a poll coming out later this evening on the Fox News channel that may give us a lot of insight into what's going on in Ohio. If he doesn't bring it home in Ohio, you know, he might as well just accept the fact that he's just going to be a host in Cleveland and not a contender. Uh, Greta, we have the uh, birthday girl who has a question for you, Kimberly. <laughs> Hi, Greta. <laughs> So, um, you know, I was in Detroit. I was you on know, your Kimberly, show. Kimberly, Kimberly, first, happy birthday. Thank happy you. birthday. And it's tough to be 29. 30 won't be so bad next year, I assure you. <laughs> Keep changing that uh, license, I do. So, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, I was on your show when I was in Detroit and there for the debate. And I have to tell you, I came away from that debate thinking, wow, what a great debate that um, Kasich had. He was, you know, very well prepared, very informative. And he's the type of man that you do want to hear more from. And it seems to me, at least all the reaction that I got from people there, that were at the debate, they thought like, wow, this is somebody I want to give a second look to. What is he going to do to try to get perhaps peel away those undecided so that they don't gravitate towards Trump? I think what he's got to do is he's, he's got to convince them why they should vote for him. I mean, he's not just a candidate, but why him instead of Trump? Can he deliver on, you know, all these politicians give so many promises year after year after year. And what he's got to be able to do is sell to the American people, sell to the voter that he's, that, you know, that he will actually deliver on these. Now, look, he's got two problems in that he's got Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders on the far left throwing Hail Mary passes to a very angry electorate out there who are sort of desperate and not wanting sort of politics as usual. So he's got a tough time telling the American people to go with someone who has been steeped in politics all these years. But what he needs to do is he needs to emphasize 
his experience. He was in the House for 18 years and why that matters and what he has achieved. Does mm -hmm. he actually achieve that which he promises? And I think that's important because we hear lots of talk. But who's actually done something? Have you, have you done that for the American voters? And, and tonight he's, got, he's going to have a whole hour. This is his, I, I see this as his big chance. He's got a whole hour to tell the American people whether or not they should. You know, the undecided ones or even those who've decided is to switch over to Kasich. Yeah, right, good Greg, point. Greg has done something. Greg, what's, uh, what's your question for? Uh, actually, this is a question from a viewer, Greta. Um, it was sent to me today. It said, um, the, my problem with Kasich is that he waited so long to get involved. He was like a hyena watching the lions eating the elephant, and now he's telling everybody to act like an adult. Is there some truth to that, that he kind of was always on the sidelines, and now when he's there, he's, he acts like he's above it all? Oh, my God. You know, Greg, I'm so surprised. It's like sort of a, a I would not the kind of question I was expecting. I thought, uh, I thought you were going to tease me about something. It was so a, that, that like question. I said, it was um, from a viewer, look, which means uh, it was intelligent. He, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. That's a viewer question. It's not one of your questions. Um, you know, look, he, he's, he's playing the elimination game. And, you know, mm -hmm. Senator Marco Rubio is a big problem. If he doesn't win Florida, he's out. And he may decide to get out before Florida since he probably doesn't want to lose his home state. And he's, and he's in the polls show that he's not doing particularly well there. Then you've got Senator Ted Cruz and you've got Donald Trump sort of duking it out. And, and, I, th and I suspect, I don't know for sure, but what uh, Governor Kasich is doing is sort of he's waiting and sort of letting, letting them eat each other in a sense and letting them eliminate each other. And if it's, if it's left standing, then he's left standing with Donald Trump and he's the only other candidate. You know, the, the so-called called GOP mainstream that uh, who, who seems to be attacking Donald Trump, they may be all throw their force behind uh, uh, John Kasich. So, you know, being the last one standing besides uh, Donald Trump may be an effective way to, if you want to achieve this uh, nomination. Greta, we have one more question. <laughs> one. So, Greta, it looks to me like uh, John Kasich is betting everything on Ohio. But I saw today that even if he wins Ohio, he would have to win 60% of the remaining delegates in order to win the nomination. So my thought is he's really counting on a brokered convention. That's his strategy. What do you think? I, Juan, I think, that, I think that has to be it. I mean, I, I don't think he's going to walk away with 1,237 delegates at the end of this voting season. He's got to hope that he can deprive Donald Trump of reaching that mark. I don't think we're going to see Senator Ted Cruz and Senator Marco Rubio get it. So he has to hope to deprive them of it and throw it into a brokered convention uh, this summer in Cleveland. I think that's the, that's the only route for him. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he's... I don't, I'd be surprised if he could reach that mark himself. So I think you're absolutely right. This has got to be a brokered convention, and he's got to be a little bit of a spoiler for, uh, for Donald Trump, and he's, got a, he's actually, I think, probably got a hope that, suppose that Senator Marco Rubio, who has said he is not, but let's say that Senator Marco Rubio gets out before next week for Florida, and let's suppose that uh, he gets a lot of those Rubio votes himself. I mean, it puts him in a much stronger position going into that convention. But I should note that Senator Rubio's campaign says he's staying in it all the way. All right, Greta, thank you so much. Have a great time tonight. Uh, Greta, we'll be watching you. <laughs> thank Following you. Following Greta's town hall with Kasich, Megyn Kelly hosts her first of two special events tonight with Ted Cruz at 9 p.m. and later Marco Rubio at 11 p.m. Eastern. Cruz weighs in on the contested convention controversy in this preview clip from Megan's show tonight. A contested convention is a different thing where you go, if no one gets 1237 and you've got two front runners, look, Reagan and Ford battled it out at a contested convention. That's what conventions are for. If you're fighting between the candidates who have earned the votes of the people, and it's the delegates at the convention who've been elected to do that. That's the way the system works. And, and, and that's perfectly appropriate. But I'll tell you, I don't believe we're going to need that either. So that's what you were alluding to. You said brokered, which would mean anyone could come in and be the nominee. The contested, meaning the, the, the current available nominee, the current available candidates would be the likely nominee. Right. And you just heard reference there to what happened between Ford and Reagan. We're going way back. And you know, that was hot. And that was, though, it's interesting because you look at it historically, that's where Reagan loses in the contested stuff. But Reagan then becomes the driving force in Republican politics, sets him up for the next time. I don't think Donald Trump wants to wait for the next time. I think he's 69. Uh, but what you have here is a situation where you, the party is in crisis, and the question is, does the crisis go to the convention? Yeah, and, and in that year, the, the, the Reagan Ford. Um, contested convention you're talking about, they were both candidates straight through.
Oh, absolutely. And then Ford ended up winning that one. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts on on? Well, I, I want to say one thing about um, Kasich, which is um, just about the importance of Ohio for the Republican Party. I remember talking to Secretary Mike Levitt when he was um, head of um, HHS under the George W. Bush administration. We were just reminiscing, and he was. I was asking him about his first campaign job, and it was for Ronald Reagan. And he was looking for these assignments. He was looking forward to traveling all over the country. And every time he went back to get an assignment, they'd say, "Go to Ohio." He was like, and he was finally asked, he was like, can I go somewhere else? And they said, no, because nothing else matters. So I think what Kasich is doing, uh, one, for his path, whatever it might be, important for him. I also think just reminding Republicans about the importance of Ohio, that it is a must win. Um, John Kerry knew that in 2004. He always laments that with 60,000 votes in Ohio, he, for then he would be president. Um, that obviously didn't happen, but Ohio is just sort of that. Uh, linchpin for Republicans. KG, uh, Marco Rubio tonight. I'm, I'm going to be listening to his attitude, his, his mentality with less than a week to go before that big, important Florida primary on Tuesday. Yeah, um, a lot of people are very curious about it, but from what I've heard him, you know, the speeches he's given and whatnot, this, he really seems like he does not want to get out. He wants to stay in. He very much believes in his candidacy and his ability to be president. And that's why he's telling everybody that's supporting him, hey, we can do this together. Don't abandon me now. Let's take Florida. I mean, if he does that, you know, he's got legs. And if not, then he's in trouble. Let me just add, add quickly. Isn't it interesting that Donald Trump is buying ads to attack him? I think the ads are called Corrupt Rubio in Florida. Mm. I, I'll throw, Greg, we want your opinion, but I, I honestly think the best thing for Donald Trump would be Kasich and Rubio staying in at this point. The way it's, the way it's breaking down, um, they're beating each other up for votes. Cruz is beating up Rubio. Rubio's beating up Cruz. And, and, and as uh, I'll lay it out a little bit in the next block, but the numbers, it, it, that actually helps Donald Trump in a wacky way. Well, you've answered your own question, Eric. Could I uh, talk about the town halls? Yeah. <laughs> um, Answer your own question. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Sean will be interviewing Donald Trump. And as you know, Sean and I are very close. So I often give him some questions. So I have some questions for Sean Hannity that he could actually ask Donald Trump that I don't believe have been asked yet. How is China killing us? I'm still waiting for the evidence on how China is killing us when the Amer America's average income per person is nine times there. I'd like to know that. I also want to know how much an iPhone will cost when you start bringing those okay. jobs back. And how will that cost of that iPhone affect the crime rate once those phones become scarce and incredibly expensive? Uh, other questions? Um, how can you go after Ford? about moving their jobs overseas when dozens of your products are made overseas? I think these are good questions that you can ask Donald Trump that people haven't asked. All right, we'll leave it right there, but it's going to be a great night on Fox.